do you remember Sister Location, the fifth installment of Five Nights at Freddy's, if you don't count FNAF World, which you should? For a while, there's been a little debate about this game and its setting in particular. As strange as it is, this game is technically one of the most straightforward in the entire franchise. We play as Michael Afton going into the bunker that's either nearby or inside of our house to do what William Afton told us to do, to, quote, put her back together. But there's always been two glaring issues with this narrative. One, its placement in the timeline. When does this game happen? We know this game turns Michael from an is into a was, and then into an again, but the when of this whole scenario is difficult to pin down. The other issue with this game has always been its plausibility. We know that this bunker, even if the game itself takes place much later in the timeline, would have been built sometime around the 70s or 80s. But if that's the case, why is it so futuristic? Everything in here looks straight out of a science fiction novel. Was William Afton just that technologically advanced? Our best guess up until now was, I guess so, just move on. On. But now, I think we have a new answer. It's a little bit out there and some of you are going to hate it. To be honest, I'm not even sure if I fully believe it, but I still think it's worth talking about. And there's the chance that if today's theory is right, everything we knew about Sister Location is wrong. So slices, put on your aprons, and let's bake ourselves a theory. Sister Location takes place in Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rental, an underground bunker where the animatronics originally meant for Circus Baby's Pizza World were held. They're meant to be rented out during the day for private parties. Of the main cast, there's Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, Ballora, and Circus Baby. All but Funtime Foxy have some sort of minion. Circus Baby has the Biddy Babs, Ballora has the Mini Renas, and Funtime Freddy has Bon Bon and Bonnet. There's one more cast member we never get to actually see in the game though, and no, I'm not talking about Funtime Chica. We see her in Ultimate Custom Night and she doesn't line up with what we are about to talk about, the Springlock Suit Night 4. Circus Baby tells us that it was built for her original pizzeria, but it was never properly used. It doesn't match anyone we see at the bunker but it does tell us that the original restaurant was built early enough to have Springlock suits. After all, we know they were decommissioned at some point thanks to the FNAF 3 audio recordings. Hand Unit also tells us that the original restaurant was opened, quote, due to the massive success and even more so the unfortunate closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So we're looking for a timeline placement that's before the Springlock suits were decommissioned, but after Freddy's location shut down, which realistically gives us one option. Again, we're not yet talking about when Sister location the game happens just when Circus Baby's Pizza World was opened, or at least planned to open. Because as a reminder, the restaurant closed and cancelled itself shortly before its grand opening, blaming gas leaks at the area and people saying they saw strange things happening around the restaurant at night. So that grand opening by my guess seems to take place somewhere around the 80s, specifically 1980 to 1987. 1983 marks the first time we see the real world in the timeline via the FNAF 4 minigames, and the crying child frequently goes to what can be assumed as a Fredbear's family diner, seeing as it's just Fredbear and Spring Bonnie. But on the TV, he's watching Freddy and Friends, which does imply that a Freddy's location might already exist by 1983, as far as we're aware. But to further back this up, we know the collectible coin in Help Wanted says Freddy Fazbear's Pizza since 1983, so that could imply that that bite on 1983 is what spawned the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So, most likely we're talking probably 1985-1986. Now, as far as the Springlock suits go, we don't know exactly when they were decommissioned, but we know they were decommissioned while a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was active, because the voice recordings in FNAF 3 that talk about them were recorded for a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And we know by the time of FNAF 2, November 1987, they'd been decommissioned for so long that the phone guy just refers to them as a yellow suit in the back. So either he doesn't know what they are and this is a different phone guy, or he assumes no one else really knows what they are and he doesn't bother explaining it. So that's the placement of Circus Baby's Pizza World, but as far as the actual placement of the game itself, that gets a lot fuzzier. The only thing we know by absolute certain is by the time the game begins, Elizabeth is definitely dead, and Michael Afton is still in contact with William. In the sister location, we see a recreation of Elizabeth dying to the hands of Circus Baby, and we can note that in that minigame, Baby's eyes are blue, but every time we see her after, they're green. Notably, Elizabeth in that minigame's eyes are also green, which implies that Elizabeth has possessed Circus Baby by the time we meet her implying that she's dead. As far as Michael goes, he just straight up tells us, Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. And I found her. I put her back together, just like you asked me to. 
So he went down there at his father's instruction. And we know for a fact that at the end of Sister Location, all the fun times leave the facility as entered. They also leave Michael as a used human sock of a person, but he's still alive somehow. And since it's incredibly likely that Michael was at the FNAF 6 fire, as well as Circus Baby or what's left of her, and Ennard or what's left of him, we know that Sister Location has to take place after Elizabeth's death, but before FNAF 6. But that's kind of all we know about placement, which isn't incredibly helpful when you could argue that we don't even know the order, let alone the dates of the important deaths of the beginning of this franchise, namely Elizabeth, Crying Child, and Charlotte Emily. So that's been issue one. The timeline here is questionable at best. Problem two has always been the setting. When we first saw the trailer with these incredibly advanced animatronics and saw this high-tech underground bunker, a lot of us thought this whole game would have been a time skip way into the future. So imagine the confusion when it's likely that this takes place somewhere in the middle of the timeline, most likely somewhere from the 70s to 90s. Something never felt right about this place. Sure, you could just chalk it up to Scott having an inkling for science fiction, see Desolate Hope for examples of that, and also just kind of stretching the truth. After all, we're playing a game about haunted Charles Entertainment Cheese alternates. So, like, realism be damned, who cares? The technology in this game is the least unbelievable part about it. But still, this felt a bit too far, at least for me. It was too futuristic, and the animatronics were so chrome and polished. They could do incredible things, something about them didn't line up. But ever since the game came out, we only really had one explanation. They just can move on. Which is fair, if we had no other evidence to explain these things. Then I guess that's the best we could do. And that was the current state of Sister Location for the most part. Incredibly straightforward in some aspects, and incredibly vague in others. Just how I like my FNAF games. So the theorizing about this game sort of took a back seat. Until now. In the past few years, we've received two different explanations for how Sister Location could have functioned. The second one is what we're primarily here to talk about today. But I'd be remiss to not mention the first, Help One. In the intro to the only VR game in the franchise, until December, looking at you, Help Wanted 2. Honestly surprised Casey lasted that long. Usually he wants to play sooner. We're pretty much immediately introduced to how meta this game is going to be. Off rip, it tells us that this is an actual in-universe VR game, based around actual in-universe indie devs made by some lunatic in an attempt to smear the Fazbear brand. We later learned that this lunatic was actually hired by Fazbear to cover up real events that happened in the timeline trying to convince the masses that these were just fictional games and these things actually didn't really happen. This threw a big ol' wrench into the narrative of these games. Some theorists believe that this is Scott's way of telling us that that era of FNAF has ended and that story is finished, and then all the pieces that are in there can be solved with those games. I think that's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I think we can still work with these games. Personally, for a while, I've just been assuming that this is Scott's way of telling us, hey, we are trying to to continue telling this massive, sprawling, mysterious story. So if we get some minor things wrong from the original games, just put that under the blanket of the indie dev who made them didn't know any better. So those games did happen, they're just not perfectly accurate anymore. And since Circus Baby, Funtime Freddy, and a whole recreation of Funtime Foxy's Auditorium are in Help Wanted, Sister Location fits squarely in there. Oh, and Ennard's there too. So again, Help Wanted implies that Sister Location Location is one of the indie games. So you could take that and run with it. You could just say, oh, well, the timeline placement and the weird futuristic tech can just be explained by the indie game dev. He didn't know any better. And frankly, that was really the only evidence-backed explanation we had for these questions until next month, when a book coming out gives us another one. So I'm going to be moving into light spoiler territory for a book that has not come out yet. Tales from the Pizzaplex number 8, B72. The story's leaked early, and as much as I don't like to talk about leaked stories, I kind of have to to say algorithmically relevant, so here we are. Hey guys, next time can we not leak the stories months in advance so I can actually talk about the book when it comes out? Thanks. Anyway, I won't mention what stories or characters I'm talking about to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible, but fair warning, this might spoil one of the stories for you. One of the stories gives us a new feature to the FNAF universe, a rule we didn't know about up until now, and it's important to today's theory. In fact, today's theory entirely hinges upon its existence hallucinogenic gas. One of the stories in this book tells us experiments that nearly 100% line up with what we see in FNAF 4. The story itself has a kid running around a dingy recreation of a household, all the while nightmare gas is being pumped inside to make it look either real in the daytime or horrifically terrifying at night. All the while, the only real thing coming at him
same as marionettes on tracks. This hallucinogenic gas was pumped in to make everything look more realistic. That way, William Afton could do experiments on fear. We also learned that this experiment chamber was directly connected to the sister location bunker. So with all this information, the question then presents itself. What if the gas leak cover story used to close Circus Baby's Pizza World wasn't entirely false? If we are to assume what we see in FNAF 4 is a real experiment, or at least nightmares based off of real experiments, and that the location that these experiments were held in is attached to the sister location bunker, a point backed up by the fuse map within sister location itself, then this nightmare gas would likely have been stored in the facility. If that gas began to leak, the whole facility would become one giant nightmare chamber, one with actually dangerous animatronics stored inside. What would be real? What would be fake at that point? If anyone went down there, there's a chance you wouldn't make it back up. You would end up just wandering aimlessly around the halls, terrified of random things that move and not seeing things that do. If there really was a gas leak at Circus Baby's Pizza World, it could have been the nightmare gas. After all, people reported seeing weird things at night. That could have just been a side effect from the light exposure they were getting being close to the building emitting this gas. This could even explain one other issue I've yet to bring up. There's one more question that's always bugged me about sister location. Why? Why didn't William go down to the bunker himself instead of sending Michael? Everything down there was of the utmost importance, a culmination of his life's work, his chance to erase the fates and bring back both of his dead children. Why would he ever entrust it to his oldest son, who he blames for killing his youngest? Why not just finish the job himself? He was obviously close. Michael was able to free these animatronics in less than a week. Now we might have the answer, the gas. William knows that this gas causes horrific hallucinations. He's the one experimenting on children with it in the first place. If he noticed the gas began to leak and made his escape, the only way to check on it would be to put on a gas mask and go back down there yourself. But then, one mistake, one slip up, and it's all over. He'd be trapped in a nightmare dungeon of his own design, left to either starve or get killed by an animatronic. That would be too much of a risk. He would need someone else to do it. Someone who already kind of knows what's going on, but he's willing to lose. His eldest son, Michael. The one that he believes caused the crying child's death. And if my theory is correct, go watch it here, the son who he'd already been experimenting on with the nightmare gas. Hell, if it did leak down there, maybe his son has a tolerance to the stuff. He could be even more effective than some random off the street. He would just send Michael down there to continue doing the work. But when Michael went down there, the landscape changed and morphed into something futuristic and high tech. The bare bones elevator that had been hobbled together turned into this futuristic air-conditioned ride. The plain wallpaper and tile floors looked more like sleek metal siding. The specific and effective scooper that his father designed looked more like a snapping turtle's jaw. Michael was seeing the shape and purpose of this area, but not its true nature. Yes, this theory's proposing that what we see at the end of Ruin is the sister location bunker without the influence of nightmare gas. Still unbelievably advanced for the time, but at least theoretically possible to be built. Remember the Help Wanted 2 trailer? We see the sister location elevator and immediately hear a hissing sound that sounds like gas being emitted, or at least leaking. But if this is truly what the sister location bunker looks like and how it operates, what is going on in sister location and how does this answer our questions about the game? We'll start with our earlier questions. One, when does the sister location game take place in the timeline? Well, if we're operating around the assumption that William took Michael out of the nightmare chamber to go do this thing for him? What a loving father, am I right? Then we can add a few more points on the timeline to plot this with. First, it's after Michael suffers the experiments that we either see in FNAF 4 or cause the nightmares that we see in FNAF 4. Still undecided there. Also, we can place this game, or at least the start of the game, squarely before William gets springlocked. He'd need to be present to get Michael out of the chamber and put him down the elevator. And being in a springlock suit, locked in a back room no one knows about makes that a little difficult. This still doesn't fully solve the timeline placement of sister location, but at least it's getting us slightly closer to a definitive year. On to the second question, how is sister location this technologically advanced? Well, it isn't. Or at least it's not as high tech as it appears to be. An underground location is already a feat of its own, don't get me wrong, but 
Cool basements certainly aren't logic-defying technology. If the real sister location bunker looks a lot more like what we see at the end of Ruin, then it honestly becomes a lot more plausible to have been built in the 70s originally. Actually, that building might be closer than we thought. Bake with me here for a second. I want to preface this rant with the fact that I don't even particularly believe this theory. But like I've said before, I believe in most of my theories, but I don't think the point of theorizing is to be right. Right, like a brainstorm is saying a bunch of wrong things in the hopes that something actually becomes true. So let's do a little thought experiment on something that's probably not true to see if it raises any interesting points. We see in this book, and again, slightly harder spoilers because you'll know pretty soon, almost immediately, what book I'm talking about when you get to it. So this will spoil some of the plot of one of the books of B72, be warned. But in the book, there is an experiment where somebody goes throughout a short wandering day and a short terrifying night in an endless cycle in recreated rooms using the hallucinogenic gas. What if what we see in this book isn't just the gameplay of FNAF 4, but the mini games as well? After all, the crying child just wanders around this one location until he collapses or cries, and then just hears that tomorrow is another day, and he presumably goes to bed. Keep in mind that the sister location breaker room map also has the FNAF 4 minigame map on it as well. Not just Fredbear's Family Diner, but the street and connected house. What if all of these were chambers, and someone was just going through the motions, doing the FNAF 4 gameplay at night, doing the hallway minigame, and then experiencing the day, going to a fake pizzeria, then repeating it. This could honestly explain why some of the kids never walk around or move, or why there's Fredbear plushies all over that seemingly all can talk to the crying child. It's all pre-built. Hell, some of it could be tape recordings like we see in the book. But this idea goes one step further, and this is getting truly weird and probably wrong. FNAF 6 is Henry's ultimate plan to end all of this. He builds a fake pizzeria and surrounds it with fake maze-like rooms to lure the animatronics in, get everybody in here, and burn it all to the ground. But what if he didn't build any of this? What if it was already built and just needed to be modified? We know that Henry made it to the sister location bunker. He has several blueprints that were most likely stored there, like the scooper, like the fun times. What if the FNAF 6 chambers and the fake pizzeria were modified versions of the FNAF 4 chambers and its fake pizzeria. That way, Henry would not only be burning all the animatronics to the ground, but the locations that they were built in as well. Do I think any of this is correct? Honestly, I'm not sure. But it's really interesting. The books don't only tell us about sister location and potentially FNAF 6, it primarily tells us about FNAF 4. And if you want to know what it tells us, I go into it right over there. In the meantime, a huge shout out to the best channel members, the Doe Risers. And until next time, as always, stay toasty, Slices.